mean, Galio, which was banned out by Flashball's last game, as well as Nautilus, and picking Nautilus into MND didn't work out the first time around. So I like the Syndra and Caitlyn, uh, sorry, the Syndra and LeBlanc presence at a Supermassive. Take away some of the blind pickable mid laners for Maple. Now we have to ask the question, will Flashwolf still ban Galio? Because we know Supermassive, we're in a group that first picked Galio a lot of the time in uh, playing stage one. So that may be the priority, but if they do that, obviously they give over so much pace to the Flash Wolves when it comes to their jungle. That's a ban against the Misfortune support, which indicates Flash Wolves still want priority, whether it's the Zyra or the Malzahar that was likely to be available. Supermassive seem like they don't want to first pick Zyra, so it forces a ban out of Supermassive. Which is an interesting one because we kind of feels like these two teams are locked in the meta where we had Misfortune, Zyra, Malzahar, and that was it. Now, of course, you can play Lulu, you can play Karma, you can play all of these other champions. So basically, if Supermassive don't pick the Malzahar here when the Galio is still available, maybe we'll see Flash Wolves end up taking it for themselves. But I like this adjustment. You say, okay, we know what you're trying to do. Let's adjust things. You're likely not to pick the Galio, so we'll let you take Malzahar, we'll let you take the jungle, we'll take a solid bot laner, and then pick up the Galio maybe later. Yep, Sakamo is picked up by Supermassive. Flash Wolves look like they want to pick up Malzahar. Previously, this lane used to do really well for Malzahar when his Voidling mm -hmm. spawned instantly. Now that it's on a 0.5 second uh, spawn time, the Q from Karma still can hit Malzahar before he can react appropriately. Not quite as deadly. We'll also see what Supermassive play around it because they don't have the option for the Caitlyn. The Ash would be available if the Lee Sin gets locked in here, which I think, again, would favor Supermassive. We know that Flash Wolves like the Varus as well, but they take away the Ash at this point again. Look at this, bot lane, level six, fighting style out of Flash Wolves. Happened in the last game, you pick a roaming mid laner, you pick a jungler that can get there. Suddenly, you've got a bot lane party. And again, very high push potential coming out from Flash Wolves bottom lane, which is very crucial in how they won their, or how they were so dominant in their domestic run in the LMS. So Massive decided to pick up Graves as their jungle of choice with Varish, which is kind of expected from them. But that does leave Lee Sin open, which Flash Wolves did not pick up in first rotation. Right, they were trying to prioritize their bot lane. I think the Lee is likely to get locked in here, unless they want to take to Talia for themselves. I think the Lee is a more beneficial pick here because while Talia is likely to get banned out by Supermassive, they still have things like a Talon. They have things like the Aurelian Sol that can do a similar role for Maple from that mid lane. And the LMS region was one of the first regions this split to really start to he emphasize heavily on Talia. So we should see that banned out by Supermassive <laughs> after Maple had such a good game with the champion. Tom Kench. So, the band here from the Flash World. We had a Tom Kench top player in Evie from the Rampage team in Phase 1. I wonder whether this is Flash Wolves protecting themselves against a pivot of Karma to the mid lane. If they take it like a neutral lane and you say, okay, you take the Tom Kench because there's Ash, there's Malzahar, he does good into both. It could be either. Fab Fabulous hasn't shown us the Tom Kench in the play-in stage. So uh, that's a a an interesting setup. But nevertheless, I, I can see the rationale between Flash Wolves taking the Tom Kench away. Yeah, I mean, Malzahar, Ash, two champions that get heavily countered by Tom Kench outside of laning phase. There goes the Galio as well, another champion that is all about protection, about getting a safe target with that damage reduction off the board. So, now it's Alibis top lane, Nautilus might be the ban here, or Kled actually, if Supermassive are looking to pick up the Nautilus themselves. It almost feels like they just ban out Kled, that yeah. will be Flash Wolves picking up Nautilus, because MND has played a lot of games in the champion in the regular split. He's also played a lot of Nautilus and Rumble alongside it, so both are options they can pick here and look at a mid lane match up to counter pick because you don't necessarily want to take an Aurelian Sol into every lane. It's not the safest blind pick. Supermassive would be able to counter that. And that leaves Supermassive in, in a rough situation. They probably have to go Syndra in this rotation and go Syndra Nautilus if they want to just take quote unquote standard setups for themselves, not necessarily winning lanes as Rumble can control that Nautilus in the top lane if that is where Supermassive go. Which means if they pick up Nautilus here, Supermassive will again be sacking the top side of the map. The question will be, can MMD get another solo kill onto Fab Fabulous and snowball that lane even further ahead? <laughs> That's always uh, a, a, an interesting question. Okay, I like this in the sense that the Syndra would be the obvious choice for the lane uh, solidarity for picking a good blind pick that can deal with most things, but they want to be able to hang with the roaming potential and the side lane threat. That's why this cannon comes out as well. Now they want to try and bully out 
uh, MMD on the side lane, have Ari roam around as well, try and create side lane pressure for themselves. Cannon into Rumble, soft side of the map. No longer the AP on AP matchup. We should see an AD Cannon coming out of Fab Fabulous. It's a champion that was very commonly banned mm -hmm. in the first two days of group stage, uh, in the play-in stage. And Naru picking up Ari, no surprise there. One of his signature picks. Flash Wolves did not burn it out this game. And the response from Maple is to pick up Rise. Yeah, now that Rise might be a surprise to quite a few people, but Maple has played a, a bunch of champions and a bunch of Rise. Now, what this does basically is eliminate some of the presence of Ari in the sense that you can lock her down, put a lot of damage out, and match the roaming potential. This also gives Flash Wolves uh, a lot of repositioning power and we've seen how good they are at making snap decisions crossing lanes getting into engages well now you've got a fear that they're doing it with a rise and it rounds out their later game skirmishing as well like rise obviously scales very well into the late game gives them a lot of power here up against a super massive team that really heavily needs to get ahead kennan needs to get ahead and should do ari theoretically needs to snowball this game too so flash Wolves taking a bit of a step back from maybe that all-out aggression yeah Super massive, running the double teleport as well with Kennen and Ari. So we'll probably be looking towards the one three one with Graves, Varus, and Karma grouping up and just wave clearing wherever they can, trying to take a new approach to take down the Flash Wolves. <laughs> well, I like that they're trying things, looking for a little bit more of a different uh, setup. I talked a lot about Syndra in picks and bands. Of course, she was banned away. That's why, of course, they didn't opt towards the Syndra. <laughs> As uh, it was the Ari coming for Naru, which is a bit of a quintessential pick for him. He can always play that champion. We've seen it all the way through since like 2013 when Naru was really breaking onto the scene in a European Challenger setup yep. before Challenger Series ever even existed. So Supermassive trying to take it back with this 1 3 1 setup. And then last match, it was fairly even between Supermassive and the Flash Wolves until 15 minutes into the match. And the Flash Wolves pretty much didn't even know what hit them because 10 minutes later, the game was over. They were run over by a bus that uh, just came out of nowhere. No stop sign at that intersection, unfortunately. Can we are on... Wolves drive buses? Ooh. That's, uh, that's an interesting one. You've seen the, the memes with dogs driving cars. Yeah. I don't know about wolves driving buses. <laughs> oh. About to find out. It's a bit more Flash. of a freight train, really. Yeah, if the Flash Wolf can drive this train straight into Supermassive again, it's going to be difficult. And again, the home crowd cheering on the Flash Wolves. They want revenge after Supermassive knocked out the Red Cannons from the first stage of play-ins at MSI. I think it's also that the crowd love watching Casa and Maple play. True. Because I, I think that's one of the things that, that makes them such an exciting team is they always seem to have that ignition switch. Like, Casa and Maple are just like, okay, we're gonna go, go aggressive. And then you see Betty, Sword Art, MMD, just like putting a lot of damage themselves and just going along with the fight and, and winning them in such clean fashion. And that is what makes this team really exciting to watch. I'm looking forward to seeing whether Supermassive now with this different setup on the game can actually reaffirm control of a game, perhaps. And the, the crowd at the CBLOL studio has been absolutely fantastic to listen to. Always getting behind the team and make sure they show their support for the players that are on the stage. And again, this entire series mostly be hearing shouts for the Flash Wolves. They are the favorites heading into this match as well. And we have got this game underway as Casa starts on the blue side of Summoner's Rift as Lee Sin, whereas Graves for Stone Mage has started on Raptor Camp. Yeah, you can see there were two wards placed in the top side. Casa trying to uh, maybe avoid any kind of invade coming through from Supermassive. But now that he's seen Fab Fabulous in the top side, Ari in mid, they know that Stone Mage won't be in the top side jungle for now. Uh, I doubt it's going to be anything like going for a bot lane gank right now. They didn't have that flash down early like they did in the last lane. So I don't think it's anything overly tricky coming out of Casa. Just looking to clear up through the top side. MND doing a very good job in his lane, making sure that every time Fab Fabulous steps up for an auto attack, he has his flame spitter on, so he at least trades evenly against the cannon. Uh, slowly, Fab Fabulous is expected to overtake that lane. Slowly and then very quickly when he has <laughs> yes. control of the lane. As soon as Kennen is at the point where he can take those auto attack trades effectively against MMD, Kennen just kind of pushes out of the lane and it's very difficult to stop him. I'm so curious to see how MMD is going to play this one. Casa now is going from blue to wall straight to red buff. So very quick level three for the Lee Sin. So Mage slightly ahead of him, just due to being grazed, has already been able to take down his Raptor camp and the double buffs. Now working on the wolf camp himself. 
But there's no focus on ganks yet from Caster, of course, because you've got a Rumble that's pushing up in the top side. You've got a Rise who, yes, you can crowd control early, but against an Ari, it's difficult to land a lot of that damage without having it traded back effectively early on. And you can see that Naru is setting up vision control on the bottom side now. Storm Age and Castle run into each other, and that's going to mean both back away. There's going to be no early exchanges from either team yet. Zeitnot and Dumbledore are free to push up in the bottom side because they've seen where Castle is, and this is a much more even footing early on. And that's what we expect from the Grace pick of Stone Age. Gives him some breathing room against Castle's Lee Sin. He's actually trying to make his way towards the top side of the map. Puts a ward down under the tri brush to keep Bad Bad with a safe. And then he's trying to do what he can to farm up against this cannon, but quite a bit of damage coming in from those empowered auto attacks. And now we have to look at whether Kasa does clock the fact that the only real reason Storm Age would be topside is if he was warding. But look, Fab Fabulous not quite respecting it. Kasa just crossed through Tribush, and Fab Fabulous is. is, is kind of teetering back and forth between pushing that last couple of minions and m risking getting ganked or backing away and he, he makes the right decision in the end of it, realizes Caster is likely still around. So early in the mid lane, just through the minimap, we saw the Maple was trying to head back to base, hit about 23 CS, which is just enough to pick up the T, I believe. Naru stopped his recall a couple of times, recalls himself, he teleports back into the lane, so trying to stay ahead of Maple at all times. Yeah, and that's when Naru... Uh, technically sacrifices experience for a moment to TP back into the lane and all get it on the second half. He gets a good recall, uh, gets double Dorans plus the boots now and is able to kind of take control of the lane once again. Utilizes that TP, but early on you wouldn't expect a mid laner to necessarily need that TP for an engage. You know, we saw Stormage trying to be a little bit cheeky inside of Cass's jungle. Uh, the Gromp gets a little bit impatient with him and waddles <laughs> back to his camp. That gives Caster some time to kick Stone Mage out of his own jungle. Bottom side of the map, Zynod and Dumbledore are still pushing in aggressively. About 10 CS up over Betty, but he should equalize it slightly yep. with this wave that's crashed. And that's a lot to do with the fact that this Karma, this Varus, a lot of poke damage, a lot of push power in that lane as well. Sword Art and Betty are biding their time to actually retake this lane. It's post level 6 as we were talking about. Like, Karma doesn't really have that massive level six spike that a lot of the supports. Malzahar, the Zyro we saw in the last game. It's gonna be Betty and Sword Art going aggressive that turns that lane back in favor of the Flash Wolves. And you can see Naru now having to carefully play in the lane. They don't have vision on where Caster is. So just has to be aware of where they could be on the map. Little does he know Caster was waiting on the wings of that mid lane, but Naru has hit level six, will be slightly safer with his triple dash available. Snow Mage is going to continue farming up the jungle, so is Kasa. A big note to point out is top side of the map, MND was forced back mm -hmm. by Fab Fabulous while he had his lane pushing. So Fab Fabulous sacrifices some experience and walks back to lane, whereas MND used his teleport. So a slight global advantage at the moment for Supermassive. This bottom side of the map, Zaino and Dumbledore is still taking a lot of harass from this Ash Malzahar lane. I'm interested to see whether MMD bias towards the defensive setup into Kennen that we've seen a couple of rumbles where you end up getting an earlier Zarnia's Hourglass. Still opting towards the Haunting Guys first, as you typically do. Mm -hmm. um, it, it, it's interesting whether he does end up doing it, because I wonder whether they'll concede that just for teamfight presence, and MMD will just say, okay, well, I'm just going to go the normal route and put damage down in teamfights and basically just play to avoid the Kennen in the side lane, and we can win through teamfights alone. Very similar story to game one, where Supermassive Flash Balls, very even. No kills this time round though, no first blood for Carson nice and early. Uh, so Supermassive must be feeling at least a little bit more comfortable. Snow Mage is trying to take blue buff away for his team. Now he's being called upon, Smite has to go down with Snow Mage. So many, so of many Voidlings! Not paying respect to the little critters <laughs> there, Snow Mage. But does get the blue buff, gets out alive, doesn't burn any summoner spells for it. Carson wasn't quite in range to be in that fight, so Stone Mage gets away with his life. Uh, I like this aggressive play here. You can see the Lee Sin has been focused on farming ahead in the uh, the, the creep store when it comes to monsters and on experience. Already level six is Kasa. That is uh, quite a quick spike now for Kasa. If he can get into the mid lane maybe, that would be one option, but he's just content with taking camps away for now. He's waiting to see where the Graves is on the map. Castle was spotted heading into this camp, but Supermassive was not quite sure where he was. Uh, so he takes away a couple of small raptors, but Stone Mage picks up the rest. 
And we'll hit level six as well. Meanwhile, top side of the match. MMD is doing a fantastic job against that fabulous. Yeah, he, he is still taking advantage of this Rumble Strong laning phase, trying to deny as much CS as he can. You can see as Fab Fabulous moves forward to try and hit it, Electro Harpoon comes out. And that's what's maintaining this advantage of about a wave and a half in favor of MMD. But I want to commend Supermassive for now for the early game jungle presence they've put out. One ward just died, but they've had a triangle of wards all the way through the bottom side of the flash wars for quite some time, and it allows them to play around where Casa is on the map. Casa hasn't been playing aggressively because the opportunities haven't necessarily presented themselves so far. Casa now is going to be moving straight into a Stone Mage's jungle, looking to take blue buff away for himself. Calling upon Rise, Fat Fabulous might force him to try and smite him. But Casa looking to try and kick him <laughs> back, gets stunned up, Ooh. resets the blue buff crucially. Yeah, that this play from the Flash Wolves. That was nice out of Fat Fabulous. Just maintains at least a little time for that blue buff to reset. That that was a nice response from Casa. The fact that they had seen Storm Age on the bottom side of the map had been stood on a, a ward in Tribush for a while. So this does benefit Naru somewhat. Will allow Naru to maintain some of the push in mid lane. It's difficult to push in a rise. But nevertheless, Ari can wave clear fairly effectively I mean, as this game continues. Maple didn't get his blue buff as well. That was yeah. stolen by Storm Age. So his tier will be stacking slower. Casa's losing out on experience. But there's an arrow coming mid lane soon. Betsy's le uh, Betty is level six. I'm stuck in Europe. <laughs> Casting uh, rock out apparently. But Betty has that opportunity. Double though, which is the one. Here's the target. Lockdown already by Sword Art. Gives a clean first blood kill for me. Uh, Upside of that though. MND has been jumped on. There's a flash from Stone trying to get on top of the rumble. He has used his flash away. Fat Fabulous throws out another shuriken and returns the kill, but in the top lane this time. A good response out of Supermassive. They were kind of anticipating the Flash Wolf engaged somewhere from, uh, you know, Betty and Sword Art. They get onto Dumbledoge, get a beautifully chained set of crowd control, but I'm glad to see Storm Age heading to the top side, trying to get as much damage down as they can. They take down MMD, and now you get to see the strength of Graves. This tower is only just getting taken down by the Flash Wolves, whereas how far ahead are Supermassive? Maybe not quite as far as you would expect MMD TPs in. This will go to the Flash Wolves eventually. Yep. First, first, blood. first blood, first turret picked up by Flash Wolves. Dumbledore just trying to charge in to stop it. Not enough. So the pick for the Flash Wolves benefits, benefits them significantly as Dumbledore's ego just gets spotted out of lockdown for ages. That's one of the easiest uh, setups that Sword Art might get from Asahara. He wasn't forced to flash or anything, but look at the exchange. MMD manages to get it. The Equalizer app that doesn't do too much damage doesn't do too much, but the reason they can't push, you could just catch a glimpse of it at the end of that exchange, was that MMD had already pushed out all of the minions in favor of Supermassive, so there wasn't a minion wave pushing up to the top tower. That delayed Storm Age and Fab Fabulous getting up to the tower, and that's why Flash Wolves get tower first blood. Yep. Now the question is, can Supermassive respond with a tower of their own while they're at this gold deficit? Because if not, got, uh, Flash Wolves will slowly once again start to bleed out Supermassive. And again, sitting nice and comfortable, just a thousand gold behind, but 15 minutes in last game is where Flash Wolves kicked off their rampage. Could expect them to do the same thing as we're approaching 12 minutes into this match. It looked like Carson was about to kick off Storm Age at that point. That's the second cue that connects to him, but you're right. They, they took a moment and then said, okay, well, now we know we can go aggressive. We've reached our item break points. Not necessarily the same for this game. Betty does have the Blade of the Rune King completed. MMD still needs more time. Oh, that's Sword a flash for though. On to Storm Age. Arrow oh, connects the arrow. with the double doge as well. He gets locked down. It's a two for one special here for the Flash Wolves. Yeah, Betty gets the buy one, get one free on that one. Shot the arrow out, tried to double doge. Didn't matter. Hit Storm Age anyway. As uh, they managed to take down the kill. Well, Flash Wolves, we talked about it. They they take this even game and then go, okay, we know we can get the exchanges and Sword Art's second Malzaha ult ends up getting another kill now. It, the crowd control layering is just very effective out of the Flash Wolves. That's something they don't seem to waste a moment. With Storm Aged first, Casa goes in, easy pickup. Then the arrow hits Dumbledoge to respond and 
maybe a little fortunate, but at the same time, it's good arrow positioning. You know that Dumbledore only has one escape route at that point. Just watching the Flash Wolf play, they really look like a cohesive <laughs> unit. They don't look like they have a top laner, a jungler, a mid laner, an AD carry, and a support. They just look like the Flash Wolves. They look like a complete pack at the moment. They do, and it scares Naru so much that he's built QSS as a first item. He's only uh, sitting on the last chapter. Last chapter QSS is not where you want to be on Ari at all. Obviously, needs to get rid of the, the Malzahar ult, the Ash Arrow, the Rise Lockdown. Maybe if you get kicked, you try and flash away. Well, QSS will save you from one of them. We'll see if the others connect there. Um, that heavily hinders Naro's ability to output damage, which, when they're trying to run 1-3-1, one, one, is so detrimental. Out comes the Realm Ooh, Rank walk. 1, doesn't even matter, it's short range. Sword Art's trying to catch up to him. No ultimate, but they're pincering him. Oh, no, he's stuck between a rock and a hard place here as Casa wraps around Zyne. No, they even give the kill over towards Maple. That's the impact of that tower being down, is as soon as Zeitnod is pushed far up, we talked about this in game one, Flash Wolves say, okay, we can capitalize on this one. There's nothing on the map that Supermassive can do. Let's go in with a Realm Warp, and suddenly they are in full control. Three minutes after we talk about it being an even game, four kills to one, Flash Wolves 3,000 gold up, and Fab Fabulous can't even pressure at this top tower. No, he can't. Rumble Equalizer lays down the pineapples and is able to clear out that minion wave nice and easy. Fab Fabulous will try to do what he can to push this one in, but it just seems like the Flash Wolves at the moment have their number. We'll eventually get this turret because MND did go back to base, but, but look at this spot lane. The Flash Wolves are like, okay, we'll take the inner, we'll do that tower trade. That benefits us greatly. Uh, Zeitnot is under tower. Has to be careful because Ash Arrow and the Malzahar ult is up. So if he doesn't respect the gap closing from the Flash Wolves, that uh, may very well lead to another death. Same in the mid lane. You have to respect the engage potential here because Naru doesn't have damage, does have his Flash, but that's about it. You see immediately super massive head back towards the safety of their jungle. Right as the Flash Wolves back off from that turret. Top side of the map though. They're fighting, but nothing's going to happen between these two. Top side of the map also littered with wards from Supermassive. Like, that is one benefit of the sense that, like, this is a team that over the last couple of minutes have been caught out and go, okay, we need to stop that. We need to put vision control down. And with top tower so low in favor of the Flash Wolves, that's a lot of the reason why these wards are up here. Just in case Flash Wolves are looking for the impact on top side of the map, but they went bot. They pushed that through instead. And there's no 1v1 coming out of Supermassive. They're grouped up as four, so it's a 1-4 team comp. Mm -hmm. Naru just feels like he doesn't have the damage to go toe-to-toe -to -toe against Rumble or Rise at the moment. That's all because of the way that, that MMD is at least able to contend and push the wave back under Fab Fabulous. And Naru cannot contend with Maple. Three kills, Rod of Ages, that's an arrow hitting. Zynod gets silenced as well. Already Casa, kick flash, double doge into the back line. Stome trying to go toe to toe. We'll get taken down oh. by Sword Art. Zynod turns one back around with a round warp, brings Maple into the team fight. Already three members of Supermassive have fallen. They only take down Casa. Oh, it looked like maybe they were going to get Betty from that exchange, but Betty kites back effectively, didn't even use his QSS, knew that while that nether grasp was on, I believe it was on Stormage, he was just able to take him out, move back in the fight, and just kite around really effectively. Flash Wolves, this is, again, these team fights are so well coordinated in their favor. And Flash will say, you want to play 1-3-1? Sure, we'll take the three members down any day. And here's that fight again, just straight away pulling the trigger as soon as the war gets placed in. Yeah, Arrow comes out, Betty looks in danger for Storm Age. Locked down, good protection there from Sword Art to keep uh, everything in focus from Betty. And okay, Casa dies again, but we, we saw this in game one. Trading Casa for three kills, Flash Wolves will always take that because Casa's impact is so significant already that him dying at the end of the fight doesn't really matter. Ooh. Yeah, Casa was straight into the back line. As soon as that fight started, Maple single spell rotation gets narrowed down to just above half health. Sword Art trying to stop him going back to base, silences him. There are three dashes available for Naru, but Sword Art just being a pain in the bum there. Yeah, being very uh, annoying at that point. Just stopping the recall, stopping any chance for Naru to maybe look towards the mid lane and, and, and save that, as that's where the next rotation is likely to come around. MMD has teleport, as does Fab Fabulous, but you have to look at it right now. Equalizer off the Leandri's Torment is going to be a little more effective than Witsend, Bilgewater, Cutlass, Kennen. Kennen needs more time to be able to output teamfight damage. MND still going toe-to-toe -to -toe against Fab Fabulous. 
can see the gold difference between the two teams. This time round, it's top side of that's doing well for Supermassive. Fat Fab was about 1,000 gold up. But in the jungle, 600 ahead for Casa. Mid lane's a massive lead for Maple. As well as a small lead for Betty in the bottom lane. Uh, and importantly, when you look at combat effectiveness right now, yes, he's a thousand gold up, but it's all pretty much in his inventory. There's a 700 gold disparity of gold currently in uh, waiting to buy items. So fa fa fabulous. His lead isn't that much effective. Also, he's building towards side lane presence. This isn't the AD carry style cannon that we have seen top laners play, where you go the hurricane after the blade of the ruined king and. As Reckless would build the uh, Frozen Mallet on top of it. So oh, here they go Realm again, though. Because now it's three versus one on the side lane. Early flash from Fab Falba still gets locked down by the Moby Boots from Sword Art. He tries to use the Slicing Maelstrom, but not even the Thunderstorm's enough to ruin Flash Wolf's day. Watch this. If a fight starts mid lane, MMD's coming with a TP. As we're talking about it, Supermassive think they can capitalize, and in comes the rest of the fight. Equalizer is available. So is the arrow from Betty. He decides not to pull the trigger just yet, but everyone collapses. They try to go on MMD. Deep, but look at the choke point. The pineapples are raining down the pain on the super massive. They will be able to take down one member, but they lose two straight away. Flash Wolves just look unstoppable. Realm Warp to the bottom lane, TP into mid. Flash Wolves, they're going under the tower. What? They're diving two turrets deep. Maple's taking this one up. The Flash Wolf from an hour gets Casa. He might pay for this one with his life. Kicks away Zeitnot. Tries to follow up with the Sonic Wave. A teleport will come in from Fab Fabulous. Get silenced as soon as he gets into this lane. Flash was a little bit over aggressive, but somehow still live to tell the tale. Well, Supermassive at least are able to, to deny a mid tower push from that as well. That's fairly significant as Flash Wolves would have been looking to advance their control on the game. Still heavily goes in favor of the LMS representatives, but I mean, Supermassive, it's a nice little response. They're able to delay, but it's not enough to reaffirm control on the game. Now, 20 minutes into the match, Flash Wolves 5,000 gold up ahead of Supermassive. With a six kill rise, that's terrifying at this point in Oof. the game. Eight stacks of his Rod of Age complete with Saras and Braves ticking. Here's that teleport from MD and the flank that Flash Wolves are trying to look for. So, this is a dangerous play from Supermassive going into this choke against what is essentially a near perfect equalizer. But Maple and Castle were a little slow to get to the exchange, and that allows Zeitnot and Naru to back away. Now comes the time where perhaps the Flash Wolves should rethink this, but they think they're so far ahead that they can go for it. And absolutely, if the execution is ever so slightly better in their favor, they can probably get another kill or two here. But Kasa kicks, doesn't quite follow up with the Q because he has to sidestep the damage from Ari. It may very well have been the cooldown as well. So couldn't do that combo where you kick into Q. Would have been enough to kill Zeitnot, but nevertheless, now there's uh, another Dragon going in their favor. You saw the stat line of how well they did with the lead. 29 and 1. That's their the biggest lead, lead they've had. <laughs> <laughs> That's the number of times they lead at 20 minutes. And then no exceptions so far internationally. Two games against Supermassive leading at 20 minutes as well. The difficulty is it's very hard to dissect a team like the Flash Wolves because it's not like they play one style and only one style. So you can't really outdraft them in that respect. It's about anticipating the speed at which Flash Wolves will group on you and reacting to that before it actually happens. And, and, and that's where we've seen the teams take advantage of Flash Wolves, when we've seen them face teams like SKT. It, it, it's harder to make those snap decisions against a team that's that solidly together like, S, uh, like SKT are. But for most teams, it's so difficult to be in the right spot at the right time, 100% of the time. Flash was taking this game a little slower than the last one, but still very commandingly ahead at the moment. Super massive. They've built three Quicksilver Sashes in this game already. They want nothing to do with the crowd patrol lockdown <laughs> that Flash Wars bring to the table. But that now puts, like, if you imagine the gold leads, that basically is like an extra 3,600 gold of, that Supermassive have that is not in combat stats, which QSS is great deterrent, and it can save your life, but it doesn't benefit you that much overall when you look at, like, the power of fighting. All it means is Bet Betty is going to fire an arrow, that's going to hit your QSS out of it, and suddenly Sword Art jumps on you with Nether Grasp, and you're dead anyway at that point. So that's a lot of gold in protection right now that, that even accentuates this aggressive 
flash rolls, they can just keep fighting. And it seems like Supermassive are trying to run their 1-3-1. One, one. Fab Fabulous is in the bottom lane against MMG. Here comes Realm Warp again, same thing. Straight into the back lines. Maple is behind Fab Fabulous. He's going to touch against MMG. Might get a kill first. Almost! Ooh. But the Scrap Shield saves his life. And Maple will run through the minion wave to pick up a kill for his team. Uh, again, it's the Realm Warp down into the bottom lane. Exact same play. This time, you can see Cannon has the advantage in the straight up one versus one. But Fab Fabulous... Couldn't really kill him fast enough before Maple arrived. But now Supermassive have the respect for Flash Wolves in the sense that the last time that happened, they tried to push up mid. Well, now they know they can't do it. They kind of sit back after pushing the wave only, take small advantages of vision control, but that is going to go back in favor of the Flash Wolves. As soon as they're back out on the map, all MMD has to do is push this top wave out, in go Sorda, in go Kasa. They take control of the Baron Pit, and suddenly you're back in the same position. Flash Wolves are dissecting this one through on team composition that's been drafted by Supermassive. MMD catching sideways from time to time. Maple ganking whichever lane he's in. <laughs> Stone Mage almost able to catch up Maple. I don't even think that would be a fight he'd yeah. want to try and take. I was going to say, I don't know whether, sh uh, you know, sliding towards a 7 0 rise at that point, who casually would just be able to 1v1 you down. Because that's a three levels up over <laughs> yeah. you. Uh, that's uh, maybe not exactly what you want at that Ooh. point. Because that would have started the, the Baron Flash Walls, realistically. I uh, tried, though. You did try. <laughs> I would have liked to see the fight. Unfortunately, we don't get it. Uh, but still 44,000 to 38,000 gold. Flash Walls still leading commandingly in Maple. He's got a flank on towards Fat Fabulous. Oh, One spell rotation. He's at half health. Big shield coming um, up the rise. Fat Fabulous just farming up the mini <laughs> wave. Eventually wow. falls to Maple. That's, he is a monster! That's not a fair fight at all. Um, Fabulous didn't even use his QSS because he's like, okay, well, oh, he's got nothing's one getting me out of this. Yeah, four QSS already. Oh, Dumbledore's got an old magic mantle. That'll be a QSS, won't it? It could be. <laughs> it could very well be. Um, at which point, Flash Wolves, I mean, they're pinging the Baron already. Um, Fab Fabulous down for 24 seconds. Has TP, but I don't really think it matters because outside of a, a catastrophic mistake from the Flash Wolves here, Storm Ace is going to have a real tough time getting into this Baron. Realm Warp already being used by Flash Wolves. Where's it going to take the two? Behind. Right behind Supermassive. Double Doge is going to be the first to fall on this fight. Storm Age going to be able to flash away from the Enchanted Chris Arrow. Now we're trying to dash around. Exhaust being used. Good equalizer cutting off the retreat pass. Sort out will flash back to the safety. Castle jumps out. on in with Betty to pick up a kill. And Maple deep into the back lines. Flashes with the flash to get another kill. And the Wolfpack tear apart Supermassive piece by piece. I, th I mean, the Constellation Fry is a tiny one in getting mid tower from the back end of that fight, but Supermassive just not really prepared to take these fights. MMD is going to go defend the mid tower push here. Maple is in behind them. Sonya's defense against Fab Fabulous slicing Maelstrom and Flash Wolves are finishing the Baron, chasing down two members. Everything going in the way of the LMS representatives. Maple, though, is trying to wrap around Fab Fabulous and Zygnot. Oh, is there a blast cone then? No. There's none! No summoner spells available <laughs> for them either. Maple just waiting. Louise, MMD's coming down as well. Sebastian stand and deliver, but can they send a deliver against these two? Zygnot will try to flash. He will lose his top lane at oh. first. Can't even take down MMD with him. And Maple just gives him another uppercut to pick up more kills for the Wolves. They were trying to, to just get one kill out of that. Say, okay, just rush him down. Kill him before the Maple arrives. And suddenly, Ryze shows up. The two versus one is complete. Realm Warp into the back line, right onto Dumbledore. There's no way of him getting out. Count the QSSs. There's one from Storm Age already. He flashes out. But it doesn't save him. His income Storm Age right now. Uh, income Sword Art, I should say. Gets onto Storm Age. First kill, Naru. Flashes with the QSS as well, tries to save his life, but not really anything he can do. The lead is so much in favor. Flash also oh, flashed into oh, it. But Casa's right behind. Supermassive did not expect the surprise lead here from downtown. Two kills already. They just don't stop the aggressions. Flash Wolves never stop. It is impressive at the pace at which Flash Wolves get a lead and look to close the game. Baron already, two people dead, in him going down. They might just start one more fight and be done with this game. Now, Flash Wolves look like they want to try and end the game here. MMD is going to be backing off, trying to stay, chase Stone Mage away inside of his own jungle. The rest of the Wolves ushering in Baron buff minions. 
Three seconds on Double Doge, but 15 seconds on Nauru. Flash Wheels are trying to push for the win. Maple is seven levels ahead of Double Doge at this point in the game. There is no one that can trade against anybody from the Flash Wheels, and that's game two in the books. Rumble's able to take down one. Maple's chasing down the Doge himself, gets another kill. Slicing Maelstrom's not going to do anything to the walls. As you can hear the crowd chant, Flash Wolves, Flash Wolves, as they charge on towards the Nexus. A double kill is picked up. They flash the icons to get as the Nexus explodes. They're now at match point against Supermassive. It may have started closer for the Flash Wolves, but that ends maybe more devastatingly than game one. 12 and 0 on the game for Maple on this last big rise. They just executed beautifully, catching out Fab Fabulous on the side lanes, constantly, constantly fighting as soon as they're taking those early skirmishes past about 10 minutes, and Supermassive had no idea how to contend with it. Yeah, it seems like Flash Wolves just hit Supermassive where it hurts the most, which is in the mid game. They hold on even to about 13 minutes and it just all falls apart. And I've got to give credit to Supermassive. They tried to contend with it. They tried to, to fight for vision and, and set up side lane fights and try and push mid lane, but it just is not enough when Flash Wolves are that clean, that crisp. It, it, it's so difficult to contend with that type of play. Yeah, and unfortunately, with the wise words of Yoda, do or do not, there is no try. Supermassive are now facing match point against the Flash Wolves. But for now, to check in with that game, let's send it back to the analyst at the analyst desk. Thank you, Fish. Of course, yet another incredibly dominant Flash Wolves victory. I, I feel like we're just turning into the Flash Wolves appreciation desk, but they are absolutely crushing the competition right now. They've got like really powerful lights on those walls right now because it is very difficult for Supermassive to see a light at the end of this tunnel because things are getting rough. I have no idea where I went with that, but I made it work. <laughs> and you you're, guys pointing, you're pointing it. dramatically, <laughs> you got it. We'll just, just keep talking, Betty. So, Pretend. in terms of the draft, what we saw was a, a shift. The Malzahar was not banned away this time, instead the Zyra was. So Supermassive very much saying, you know what, we think that we can handle it. We think we've got an answer, especially by getting themselves a lunar rotation on the Karma. Sword Art is pretty good on Malzahar. I feel like <laughs> there was a reason why they banned it in the first time round, and then they're like, oh no, <laughs> he's really good at this champion, and he did a lot of work that game. Yeah, and I mean, realistically, when you look at the bands, if Zyra was that big of an issue, maybe you just have to give them Syndra. There are at least counters to that Syndra, right? And when you look at the counters to a Melzahar, we were talking about this before, the answer is usually a QSS. You can't go cleanse against it. They've got an Ash. You want cleanse, but you have to go QSS now. And if four people on your team are building a QSS, you're investing 5,200 gold in a losing game. Yeah, let's look at this. They had 7k deficit. 5,200 gold into QSS is 12k down. I mean, of course, the QSS does give you some relevant stats, but that is not the investment you want to be making. This was absolutely brutal. The best way to like give an example for you is a QSS is a BF sword. And if you're winning the game and you buy a BF sword, the opposing team is building a QSS, one of you does more damage, <laughs> even if you're not dying to the Malzahar. But they were still dying to the Malzahar. Yeah, unfortunately. But of course, Malzahar was so impactful, we thought it would be a good idea to put together some Acer replay footage of the Ash and Malzahar together to really show you how key they were into getting this game going in favor of the Flash Wolves. The thing that I really enjoyed was the fact that every time Malzahar found a pick, the Ash arrow was not far to follow. And this play I loved because the Ash arrow wasn't even aiming for Karma. They were trying to set up onto the Graves and then it just happened to land by uh, coincidence. So really constant setup from the Flash Wolves. And this is just a good demonstration of, again, their ability to set up vision and then find these picks all across the map. And here, this was arguably a bit of a misposition rather from the super massive squad where they, they couldn't really find proper opportunities to use those teleports. While you can send Ari off onto a side lane and Kennen off to a side lane, and both of them got through the laning phase reasonably unscathed, the reality is every time they joined these fights, it was just too late. The picking power yeah. of the Flash Walls was just too swift for Supermassive to be able to effectively respond. And once the lanes were a little bit broken up, Sword Art was actually free to roam around the map. That's how all of these plays are allowed to happen. He's free to make place vision down with Castle. They have control wards down. Naturally, they'll start to find these picks more aggressively. And you will note from all of those replays we saw, the first pick successful, the second, the third, every re respective pick afterwards accelerated, happened more often. But it did feel like Supermassive stepped things up a little bit in this game. It did not immediately go south for them. They were going even, at least in the middle or in the early game. Level six was the big disaster point. Now you brought up the Karma being a better pick for them. Malzahar feels like a bigger issue than a Zyra. Do we just see them say, hey, okay, maybe Malzahar's a problem. We ban Zyra, we take the Karma, and they can go to potentially a more even game. But 
Maple went, what, 11-0-6 that game? Like, on a ride. <laughs> this guy was getting kills in the early game like a madman. You want to give him a Syndra or a LeBlanc? Like... There's, it's, it's oh, I'm not saying, I'm just saying, <laughs> leave up the Zyra. Don't leave up the LeBlanc and the Syndra. Clearly, that would be insane. It's a, it's um, it's one of those catch-22 situations, right, where if you take Sword Art off a of comfort, sure, they don't have the same sort of playmaking power. Maybe he doesn't roam around the map and he doesn't get the same sort of picks. But then you have a winning, a hard-winning matchup going in the favor of Maple, which you can start to snowball with the pressure that you're seeing from Castle already. He's investing a lot of ganks in the bottom half of the map, and now he just needs to shift those round to the mid and start snowballing Maple instead. And he's already confident enough to pick the least in into the Graves. He's not afraid of Graves' jungle clear speed or anything like that coming out of the ganks of Stone Mage. But for what it's worth, and my only point that I would contest that with is, say, just try and empower Zeitnot a little bit more, right? Like, if if support is still being, like, this big of a factor in the games against Flash Wolves and Zeitnot is meant to be your big carry option, Ban all of the support. Ban five supports if that's what it takes, just to give yourself yeah, a winning place. They're clearly place. not banning out Maple. <laughs> yeah. And clearly, I mean, the supports have been the kind of the big factor in getting the snowball rolling. Maybe put some bans towards Karst as well. These guys feel like the ones who are starting it off. Maple is there. He's doing his job every time. He's doing it immaculately. But it doesn't seem like it matters if it's a rise, if it's a little blanc. Whatever you give him, he's going to make an impact. And we're even seeing in the top lane, uh, we're actually seeing a few ganks come out from the side of Super Massive and Fab Fabulous. He seems to be holding his own in terms of the matchup because especially when he's on blue side, he's able to to get that favorable at least 1v1. And so if he can also get himself a strong lane, you have two, you have a favorable matchup in the bottom and a favorable matchup in the top. And then maybe you shift onto a more proactive jungler. Maybe you just uh, shift onto the Elise or maybe you try and take the Elise in away for yourself rather than the Graves who is much more about the uh, getting into the enemy jungle and stealing away camps, like at the moment he can't do that. He can't, he's not even getting to the team fight phase where he is at his strongest. Yeah, it needs to change something up. Definitely. So let's take a chance then to look at the second replay. This is the replay, the final fight essentially for Flash Wolves. They already have a massive lead and this is the point where they can secure the Baron and just start to take over. And again, the use of the Rise Ultimates, it always pays homage just a little bit to Bjergsen from the NLCS when he revolutionized in part where the Rise Ultimates can go. But the fact that they force an objective and immediately Rise Ultimate to get into these fights, it indicates they don't care about Baron. We're at a, we're at a stage in the game where a kill is far more valuable, individual mechanics, even dodging charms out. Like they were just leaps and bounds ahead. And the only reason this graph looks any different than the last game is because Flash Wolves are on red side this time instead <laughs> of blue side. Uh, and really grim, backs against the wall for Super Massive. Now we saw TSM yesterday kind of turn up when it came to their game three. Do you think that we'll see something similar here for Super Massive? Do you feel like these guys can come back? I know I've asked you this before. <laughs> We've talked about the draft. We talked about banning the supports away. What is it going to take for Super Massive to find a game? Uh, well, what would be really nice is if the support didn't do more damage than both your AD carry and your jungler. I feel like that we talked about, or uh, rather you talked a lot about Sword Art being the sort of silent hero, and we're just seeing it so much, and I agree with Rusty. Maybe you just have to take him off of something that he can have so much impact on, because as a player, he has been around the professional scene for quite a long time, and his ability to control his team and dictate the pace of the flow, I think is a big part of the success of the Flash Wolf. I will say, I told him to play a little bit slow, more calm League of Legends, obviously. Obviously didn't work. I think the only thing left for them now is to go all in, pick a Blitzcrank or something crazy. Throw to try and just throw everything. Up. Go full Gigabyte Marine Soda yesterday. You yep. go aggro, you take yes. fights. All right, well, we might just see it. It's match point for the Flash Wolves. We'll see if they can 3-0 Super Massive to claim their spot in the MSI groups. Game three is coming up right after the break. Don't go anywhere. Betty has that opportunity. Dumbledore is the one. He is the target. Locked down already by Sorda. Gives a clean first block. MMD still needs more time. Oh, that's Sorda. a flash four though. On to Stone Mage. Oh, arrow connect arrow. for the double doge as well. He gets locked down. Casa kick flash double doge into the back line. Stone Mage trying to go toe to toe. We're going to take it down by Sorda. Zainal turns one back around with the realm war. Brings Maple into the team fight. The to stand and deliver by candidates and deliver against these two. Zainal will try to flash. He will lose his top lane. Oh. First, can't even take down MMD with him. The lead is so much in favor. Flash also oh, flashed into it. Arrow, but Casa's right behind. Supermassive did not expect the surprise Lee Sin from downtown. And now at match point against Supermassive.